Okay, you all know the drill by now, let's get to it. So this is the Give Energy report that I generated for February 2024, and you can see that we generated a total of 176 kilowatt hours. That's a little bit lower than we would normally expect. I'll show you uh, how that compares to the uh, predictions from the PVGIS system in a little bit, but uh, for now you can see we averaged somewhere in the region of uh, you know between five and ten kilowatt hours a couple of days. Actually reached as high as 12.6 there on the uh, on the 12th and 11.4 on the 24th. Um, you know nothing too spectacular, but it's all good. So one interesting thing I do want to show you actually is the grid import and exports. Uh, we uh, imported a total of uh, 700 kilowatt hours, but interestingly, we also exported just about 11 kilowatt hours. Now uh, that was mostly due to um, a couple of interesting things. The on the 8th of February we had one of the give back uh, DFS sessions where we exported. 3.2 uh, kilowatt hours and that was mostly from the battery but these other couple of days um, on the 12th we uh, exported 4 kilowatt hours and a couple more days here the 18th 1.25 and on the 19th 1.31 those were actually um, excess solar amazingly so we actually had enough solar to not only run the house and the heating and everything else but also to export a little bit so uh, that was nice to see hopefully we'll get a few more days like that uh, later uh, in the year. And if I scroll back up to the top, you can see the nice little energy flow graph here, which I always like to see. Um, and you can see here is the tiny little amount of uh, grid export that we did, 11 kilowatt hours. Mostly, um, obviously, we imported a whole ton, 700 kilowatt hours. But in incredibly, almost all of that was using the off-peak Octopus Go um, period during overnight from uh, half past midnight to half past four, which meant that our average... Uh, pence per kilowatt hour was only just over nine pence per kilowatt hour. So nine pence per kilowatt hour is the is the Octopus Go off peak rate, um, and in fact the our average was just slightly above that, but obviously it's rounded to the nearest pence here, um, and that gave us a total bill for the month of February of seventy nine pounds, which um, is pretty incredible when you consider that that's not only just our standard base load, um, you know, daily use for the house, but also the uh, EV and our hot water and our heating. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm, I, I'm very impressed that we could get all of our energy use uh, down to uh, 79 pounds. So let's take a look in a little bit more detail at the generation for February. As I mentioned before, we generated 176.4 kilowatt hours. Now that's a little, a little bit lower than what we would expect from the PVGIS estimate that I did before, um, but well within the plus or minus one standard deviation. So although it was a little bit down, it's not unusually low. So uh, that's okay. And in terms of our consumption for the month, uh, you can see that uh, it was way down on what it was in January, mostly dominated by the fact that our heating was significantly lower than it was over the last few months. Uh, our heating demand was only 348 kilowatt hours compared to 644 last month, 500 the previous month, and uh, 364 the uh, in November. Um, so yeah, this is the lowest it's been since the start of the winter, really. Um, I, our uh, standard base load, pretty much much the same again, 250 kilowatt hours. Our car EV use it was um, pretty low compared to um, most of the previous months, only 56.8 uh, kilowatt hours. I think that's because we took fewer trips to go and see family and friends and things like that. So this was mostly just cat uh, driving to work, which uh, she doesn't have a particularly long trip and she only works a couple of days a week. So um, not a huge amount of EV use this month. The uh, hot water, um, a little bit lower than last month, but um, pretty comparable to the previous two before that, 158 uh, kilowatt hours. Obviously, uh, February is slightly shorter than those other months, uh, a day or two shorter. But uh, yeah, um, pretty typical for what we would normally expect for our hot water use. Our dehumidifiers a little bit up on last month, 21.5 kilowatt hours, but you know, well within what we would normally expect. And our towel rails, uh, pretty standard again, 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So giving us a grand total of 850 kilowatt hours uh, total consumption for the month. So was our heating unusually low for this time of year? Absolutely. You can see compared to what we would normally expect based on the modelling I did uh, last year, uh, we uh, consumed 350 kilowatt hours roughly, but that's significantly lower even than the minus one standard deviation line here. So it's about 1.7 standard deviations lower than, uh, than we would normally expect. So uh, why is that? Well, let me show you. 
This is the Met Office monthly report for February and uh, it mentions that uh, it was the warmest on record for England and Wales. And if I scroll down here, it has this sentence, mean temperatures more than three degrees above the February long-term average for many uh, counties in southern England. So I'm in southern England and now let me show you the actual map here. Uh, I'm somewhere in this region in Gloucestershire and you can see we were somewhere between two and a half and three and a half degrees higher than uh, normal for, for February. So that's why our heating was, was so much lower than we would normally expect is because it, the simple fact is that the temperature was much higher. So that means much less demand uh, for the heating. So there's one more chart I'd like to show you before I move on to show you the final savings for the month. And that's this old chart that I've shown in previous videos, but I haven't for the last few months. Um, but yeah, this month was super interesting because uh, this is the uh, off-peak period uh, for Octopus Go. You can see the tariff line here that dips down to about 9 pence per kilowatt hour before going up to nearly 30 for the rest of the day. And this is our consumption. So I, what I've done here is I've taken all of the days in February and I've added up all of the consumption in each half hour block. And that's what's shown here. So uh, all of this stuff is basically us filling the um, home storage battery, uh, charging the EV, uh, heating the hot water and also doing some uh, preheating of the house with our uh, heat pump uh, heating system. So all of the demand basically is in this off-peak period and the rest of the day is supported by the battery and solar. So what you can see is basically almost nothing at all in addition to this uh, import over the off-peak period. There's nothing really during the peak period. The tiny couple of little blips uh, along here and actually this is dominated by that one uh, DFS uh, savings session um, the give back session that we took part in uh, in February uh, that was the battery um, pre-charging before the export which happened in this period here and you can see there's a tiny bit of export um, in those two half hour blocks there which was part of that uh, that uh, DFS session and there's a, t a couple of tiny little blips here during the day that's those other um, periods during during February where we had a little bit of excess solar and that um, exported during uh, during the middle of the day there. So yeah, I just thought this uh, chart was interesting just to show you that uh, despite the fact that it was February and we had our heating running and all that other stuff, we were able to essentially run entirely using off-peak uh, power, which meant that our uh, bill was uh, super low. So uh, let me show you what that looked like. All right, so let's finish up the video by showing you the savings for the month. Um, we had a total bill in February of only £79 as I showed before. Uh, the bill would have been closer to 220 if we hadn't had the uh, the heat pump and the battery and the solar. So this what I call equivalent cost is assuming we still had gas to do our hot water and our heating, if we still had the petrol car um, and uh, we didn't have the solar or the battery and we were on the standard uh, octopus flexible tariffs for both gas and electricity. So that gave us a total saving of £146. That includes the uh, approximately £6 that we earned through the DFS um, session, uh, that one session in, in February, I think it was the 8th of February. Uh, you know that's way down on what we had in uh, in uh, December and a little bit down on what we had in um, in January for those DFS sessions because there was only one of them and it was not a super good uh, rate but you know we'll still take an extra six quid that's fine so yeah I'm super pleased with a monthly bill of only £79.50 you can see actually that uh, it's the lowest um, monthly bill we've had uh, since October uh, and if you compare it to the previous summer where we were actually earning uh, quite a lot of money due, due to the uh, the very good export rate from the flux tariff which we'll be moving back on to probably in April sometime I think uh, we'll stick with Octopus Go for March but we'll probably be moving on to um, Octopus Flux for uh, for April onwards um, but yeah if you take a look at these red bars here you can see they dip down below the zero line um, for over the summer and then obviously up uh, po into positive regions for the winter but I'm curious to see actually if I add all of these up uh, once we get to March and then I've got a full year for the whole system because we installed our system in in March last year so once I've got the data for March we'll have a full year's worth of data it'll be really interesting to see are we actually going to hit uh, a net zero bill across the year I think it'll be slightly positive but uh, we shall see but I'll do that calculation in uh, next month's stats video so uh, I'll look forward to share, sharing that with you but for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one.